Um, this week on Three Sides of the Coin, I'm back. And it's With Coors birthday. Light. And it's my birthday. <laughs> and my daughter brings me beer. Um, so this week on Three Sides of the Coin, we go through our top three Can't Live Without Kiss albums, plus we talk about different music as well. Imagine that. A uh, Kiss Not podcast. Not related that... things. Oh, God. That they're, now they're just going to hit the stop button. No, they're not going to stop button because I'm on. That's true. We're lucky this week, guys. <laughs> oh, and Brian makes a special appearance too. So. And Lily. Oh, and Lily too. Yeah, and Lily. Her hand comes in with a beer. This is three sides of the coin, talking all things kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to. Three sides of the coin. Want to get your official three sides of the coin logo and shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. We've got the entire family here. Woo-hoo. The immediate family, not the extended family. We've got Mike. We've got Tommy, Mark, and the beautiful Lisa Martini. I made an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> so how's everybody doing today? How is Thanksgiving? Food comas for everyone? Mm-hmm. No, no food coma, but a great day. Great, great day with family. Thanksgiving's awesome. Yeah. This food, doesn't get better. Food coma. Liz rocked the house, man. She just fucking food after. It was like left swallow, right swallow, <laughs> left swallow. <laughs> I swear, I, it was just fucking incredible. So. Oh, wait a second. Start, Mark, you I turned your lights down. off. I did. You know, it was a little too bright. A little oh. too bright. I, well, you know what? I. I, I Again, you know, Monday night's hockey night. Just really sore again today. So it's been a oh, couple weeks. It's been good. Do you need a rub down, Mark? I do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you from the peep show booth, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm massage tomorrow. So before we get started here, let's everybody wish Lisa Martini a very happy birthday yes. yesterday. Oh, we're like, yeah, we're like a little late. late but... birthday. You're 29, right? Yep. Again. Yeah. Again, nice. We 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 wished her a happy birthday on uh, our new radio show live yesterday. That was very cool, by the way. It was fun. It was a little. It was a little rough around the edges, but then when isn't yeah. insights? I would expect nothing less. Exactly. We joked about M- Mark's router because Lisa was having technical difficulties. <laughs> oh yeah, because I, I I first of all I wasn't aware of how to use it. So then there's that. And she didn't have headphones. I didn't have headphones. I could hear, like, feedback. So. See, we all come prepared. <laughs> it's a learning curve. It's a learning you know? curve. So so while, while we're on that topic, let's just tell everybody, Three Sides of the Coin Radio is back. You go get the Station Head app. Right now it's only for iOS. It will be coming for Android first part early next year. Go get the Station Head app, load it up, create an account, search for Three Sides, and you'll find us there. We are broadcasting Kiss Music 24-7, 365. Awesome Never goes off cuts. the air. Awesome deep cuts. Awesome deep cuts, just like what we used to do. And it's going to get deeper once I figure out how to use the, the, the software. Um, Lisa and I did a live show yesterday for about an hour. We were taking requests and we were chatting with fans. There's a live chat room on the radio station. You can make instant requests as you're listening and we can immediately add them in and play them. Um, so all good. 
and we're going to try and schedule live shows once a week. I don't know what day. It's probably not going to be the same day and time. No, I think we'll move it around. And yeah, plus, we'll... any one of us can jump on at any time. So yep, you never exactly. know when you're listening what's going on, and we'll take questions from listeners. But I'm challenged until we get to the Android part because Cheryl has the iPad. It's the only Apple product in the house. and She won't let you use it? Get... Exactly. <laughs> I don't want you messing up my picture. You know, whatever it is. I don't so. want you to see my pictures. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to see my pictures, yeah. And you know so, what's neat about it is like any of us can jump on, um, and I don't even have to get prettied up. Right. I could be naked for all you know. Oh, she was yesterday. There I you knew. go. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and just as an added treat, Lisa confirmed that a future upcoming show, she's going to sing Kiss Songs live on the radio station. Excellent. Starting with Read My Body. Read My Body. <laughs> Well, and I want to take a minute just to say thank you to each and every one of our listeners and viewers. You guys are absolutely wonderful, and we really appreciate all of your support. We truly do, and that's why we keep doing these different things. But I wanted to share something that Michael shared with us yesterday that I thought was really awesome. We have, what is it, 800,000 now? Minutes? No. This year or in lifetime? In lifetime. Lifetime, 80 million. We have 80 lifetimes. Since this show started, we now have 80 million minutes listened. Just on YouTube. Yeah, just on YouTube. 800, that's insane. 80, 80 million. million minutes have been spent. I wouldn't say spent. Wasted's a better word. Waste. <laughs> wasted. You guys, have, you guys and gals have wasted 80 million minutes of your life listening to us thank and for you. that we are truly thankful because i wouldn't spend that much time listening to myself yeah yeah you would no i wouldn't <laughs> no i wouldn't <laughs> let me think about that yeah so thank you guys i just want to say thank you we, we do appreciate the support and we feel like we're a family and we really are so blessed that you guys are here even the haters listening you know because we are so appreciative of the people that hate us as well we really, truly are. It's good you to know, be hated. Make us laugh. It means yeah, you you're doing something laugh. right. What, mean, did, uh, what did Winston Churchill say? Someone doesn't like you, good. It means you stood up for something. Yep. Amen, well, brother. I didn't know this, but I'm a dog wobble. <laughs> we're a cauldron. Awesome. We are a cauldron is. of them. Awesome. Oh, we're a cauldron. Yeah, we're a cauldron. We're a yeah. cauldron Hello. of twat waffles. <laughs> so silly. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Waffle. Um, never, that's a funny word. Though. The cesspool. That's, that's an awesome word. That's like ass hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a I great like, word. Like ass hat. It's going to be on a t-shirt. Yeah. Cauldron of twat waffles. Let's make a shirt. We're going to have maybe like I drink from the cauldron of twat waffles. Yeah. Well, hold okay. on. Are they going to get residuals? Because I never got my residuals for the cesspool T-shirts they made. No, that they was didn't my bother to send idea. us a cesspool T-shirt. Well, yeah, but you got to sell some. So really, I don't know if you, you know. I, I it's it's kind of. I'm not sure if somebody went. Somebody said really that fast. to me that that they made T-shirts that said that, and I'm like, really? Do you so, know what? A, you know what a cesspool? It's a. It's literally a pool of shit. <laughs> you wear that on a shirt that said that word i i just like <sighs> maybe it should be more like the um the dictionary version cesspool literally a maybe pool of sh- we <laughs> need to make a t-shirt that says cesspool equal pool of shit yeah just uh that works too just too funny but. So anyways, thank you guys. We appreciate you um, indulging us. And we, I just wanted to share that because when Michael had said that to me the other day, I was just blown away. Hey, but, look, while we're getting while we're making our wrists sore, patting ourselves on the back, Michael, those those things from Apple that we get, it seems every week or two, every couple weeks. Yeah, the, oh. the podcast updates. Right. Guys, just to let you know, like Tommy, to continue on with the thank you, we're in the top 50 excuse me, in the United States for music podcasts on Apple 
what is it, Apple iTunes or Apple, whatever? Apple iTunes podcasts. I think it's the Music Interview Podcasts, which is what we're classified as. We're in the top 50. It fluctuates, but around the world, I mean, we've been top 10 in Sweden and I think Norway and Canada. And it's, I, I think a lot of people cool. just go, oh, I, you know, we look at the numbers and, you know, you guys get a few thousand on YouTube. Guys, it's way more than that. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're watching us on YouTube, you know, cool. I'm glad that's where you get your three sites fixed. But you know, Michael, is, is you're never shy to let everybody know I mean, we're available all over the place. Yeah. But, but just to have Again, Michael sends us these things from Apple. I mean, they have no reason to blow smoke up our skirts. You know, <laughs> you're top 50 here, top 10 here, top 20 there. Thanks, guys. Thanks. And it's a success that you guys should be proud of as well because you're supporting us. If without you, we wouldn't have this. And so we really appreciate it. And you know what? I want to I wanna segue that into the – last week I wasn't able to, to be here. I had some family business to take care of, and, and I didn't get to throw my two we, cents we, on we got to let Mark have his quarter. Yeah. Well, it's not even a quarter. It's more like a nickel. Um, but, but, you know, obviously the topic du jour was the, was, was the magic book. And I just wanted to say, you know, I don't go to the cesspool. I don't read that stuff. But when, what was it last I checked, there was, I don't know, between five and 10 pages of them talking about our episode or whatever. It's crazy. And people send stuff and, you know, Michael sends stuff in the morning like this, you know, a quote or something. We're constantly and, we're constantly getting screen captures and messages from listeners going, do you see what, do you see what, they, do you see what they said about you? Are you aware they're doing this? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Are you aware that they're saying, like, I don't care? Well, I, I, one of the, the funniest things that, that I read. Um, was somebody it was a backhanded compliment. They they didn't realize that. To me, it's the greatest compliment this show could have. Uh, it was somebody complaining about the show, and he said, and I'm paraphrasing. No other Kiss podcast would do an episode like this, and I thought to myself, "You're Thank goddamn you. right." Exactly. Thank you. We've never. Yeah. We've never we're wanted to be anybody else. Yeah, we're not interested in being anyone else. We're not in, interested in, in making sure everything is lollipops and fairy tales and the whole Kiss world sings Kumbaya together. Look, it's not man, a Kiss tune. They wouldn't sing that. Yeah. Send in the clowns here. is what they'd sing. We're here just to talk amongst ourselves, the four of us. Tell, talk about what's going on in the world of Kiss. And guess what was going on in the world of Kiss at that point? A couple weeks ago, people were IMing us going, hey, um, what do you know about this book? I'm trying to get my money back and the guy running it won't give me my money back. OK, well, we get one of them. Then we get two. <laughs> then we get more. And I'm like, why are people coming to us asking, what do we know about this? So we do a show about it. Um, and again, all of us. I'm talking about the people of three sides, not not our special guest that week, which was Tom. We were all complimentary to the fact that we want to see this book come out. We don't want to see any fans lose their money. Fuck no. We all want success. But guess what? When people are promising to give people money back and they don't, we mentioned it. Now, I, I found out a little bit of Internet logic in the last two weeks because I learned from reading some of those posts that the people that would be us, the people who are listing facts, and the facts are that the, the, the person running the magic book who promised refunds is not giving refunds. We, all we did was point that out. And there's a contingent of the KISS Army that went, you're the bad guys. But the person who wasn't honoring their word and giving refunds when he promised refunds, he's the good guy. Did you follow that? That's Internet logic. Because all we did is we had fans contact us when we said it. It's obviously true because the person running the book 
is currently on their site. Like, hey, I'm trying to give people refunds by the end of the year. I just don't have the money. Hold on a second. All we did was point that out. All, all, uh, Mark, actually, all we did was give voice to all of the fans online that were asking these questions, making these statements. So how are we the bad guys? Because you, uh, the, the four of us have read enough of those, oh, those fucking guys are trying to smear me and the smear can- What? You, I, 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 and instantly you can tell somebody who has not watched the show. Because people who have not watched the show are the people who think we're trying to smear the book and we don't want it to come out. That's not true. None of us said that. The only person who doubted the book coming out was our guest. But guess what? He's a publisher. He's a guest on the show. He can say whatever the fuck he wants. Because like Tommy says all the time, we're here to just tell you the truth. And guess what? That whole two hours when we talked about magic, you got nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. Here's here's you know, there's there's people out there saying that we lied and we gave wrong information. And and all I can say is please tell us what did we get wrong. I mean, whether it's the author or anybody else, we've said we reached out, we wanted to get the questions answered, the author didn't want to come on. We said even after that episode he's welcome to come on and tell his side of everything if we lied about something tell us what it is yeah tell us exactly what it is that we got wrong because i've been hearing that now for a week and a half that that we are misrepresenting that we don't have our facts straight that we are completely wrong and blah 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 blah. but yet not one post or one sentence anywhere from anyone saying what it was we were wrong about you know that was it. I, I don't. Yeah. I know you guys talked about it last week. Yeah. Like I said, I I couldn't join you last let's, week. Let's let's not a beat beat a dead yeah, horse. Right, yeah. right. But done. I have to get that off my chest because, like Tommy says all the time, and I just you know, we we're gonna give you honesty every week, man. And if people are talking about something in the Kiss community, that's fair game. You know this this also ties in right right you know years ago, and of course we always <laughs> tend to bring up the talk book. But, you know, I saw somebody from another show. This is back when all this stuff happened with the talk book. And this goes about, for, and for, you, for those who don't know, that the original Kiss crew. Yes, the Out on the Streets book. Somebody said, and again, I'm paraphrasing, like, we would never talk to you about your book that way. And I'm like, about what way? You wouldn't tell them the truth? I don't like the book. If I don't like the book, as a Kiss fan, I'm thinking maybe you won't too. But what we tell you? Go buy it. Find out on your own. Same thing with Ross's book. Go buy it. I mean, once it's out, if I was you, I wouldn't send any money in because it's not done. But, but, but once it's you, done. What, 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 what we have said repeatedly, not just in last week, but for the last four and a half years, is we will be happy to buy the book when it comes out when it's done when it's shipping if that book in my for me personally if that book lives up to all of the incredible marketing and hype that's been made about what it's going to be i am excited as hell to see it I, i'm not lying i'm excited as hell to see it i will buy that book when it comes out and I encourage everybody else out there, if that interests you, buy it. Buy it. I mean, there's no agenda here other than I hope this gets resolved very quickly and comes out as quickly as possible. Of course we want everybody to get what they paid for. Why the fuck? You think we have a stake in seeing anybody fail? What are you, fucking nuts? I mean, that... that I guess that's the part of me that really drives me crazy. You know, doing the show is a lot of fun, but when I see stuff like that, it, it doesn't so much make me mad. It perplexes me because I know what we said. I, I was part of the show. I know what I've preached. 
You know, matter of fact, it was funny because, I, you know, much like you said a few minutes ago, Michael, you know, Ross said that we were trying to smear him and stuff. And I'm like, you know, it was his birthday a couple weeks ago. I sent him a nice little birthday thing. He said, thank you. I mean, we're on friendly terms. What the hell was that all about? And I know we watched the episode. Well, hey, dude, when did when did I or when did anybody on this show wish you any ill? When did anyone on this show say your book wasn't come out? Not, again, the, the hosts of the show, not our guests. We didn't. What Michael just said a few seconds ago is the same thing we've been saying for the last four and a half years. Book sounds great. I'll, I'll send my money in when it's available. Period. End of story. So to say anything other than that, to say that we're trying to do a smear campaign, to say that we're not being supportive, that's a bunch of bullshit, and you know it. You know what that actually is? That's an agenda against three sides. Yeah, and who cares? Yeah, we we sure don't. (laughs) Honestly, you can't insult us. Dude, like I say all the time, this is my fucking bowling night. Monday's hockey night, Tuesday's three sides. It's fucking bowling, dude. I'm just having fun shooting the shit with my friends. Again, if you're going to write in, you're fat, your beard's stupid, you wear a dumb hat. Really? You think I'm going to fucking waste two seconds on that? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, again, this is this is what we do for fun. I'm here not because... We're top 10 and we're top 20 and Apple and we're 80 sure million. Because we're making I'm, money. <laughs> I'm here because I'm seeing my bros and my girl and I'm having a lot of fucking fun. That's it. End of story. Talk and kiss. That's it. Talk and kiss. You, you, having pizza. If you see anything more Why than that. Not work? Well, I, if you see anything, I mean, if there's any other reason, someone please let me know. Because trust me, you know, Tommy and I. We'll talk on the phone, and it's no different than doing the show. And it's just the same, same stupid fucking insults and crazy shit that we do all the time. Mm-hmm. You know? Lunch. No different. The only difference is right now the fucking camera's on. Now, now, when it's you and Lisa alone, it's a little different, though. That's a whole other story. <laughs> and I've heard the camera's been on for that. Those are for, that's again, that's three sides after, after dark. dark. Oh, which speaking of uh, uh, Mark, uh, you know, anything speaking else you want to say? Because I want to kind of I want to segue this into some fun stuff. Well, so, well wait a Tom, minute. Tom, I do want to say that Mark did say to me, though, he's like, you know, when you meet a girl that'll let you film her doing stuff like that, she usually doesn't say no to too much. So. <laughs> Did you just embarrass Lisa? I don't get embarrassed. No. That's that why you, you, you do get very scared of hummingbirds, but you don't yes. get embarrassed. Hey, anyway, that poor go ahead. You're spalling down now. I won't even have them anymore. Look what you did. We didn't. Oh, yeah. Blame us. It's our agenda. It is. It was us with an agenda out to get the hummingbirds. It's your fault. They heard it. They're like, "Fuck this, I'm out." So, 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 in case anybody missed it, Tommy, why don't you give a little uh, uh, discussion on the Alice Cooper interview that we posted? Uh, did we put it up yet? Well, by the time this goes out, it'll go up. Okay, so we haven't talked about it. Yeah, so um, as you guys know, and you've been busting our balls for quite some time, because I did a a quick little video with him a year and a half ago, maybe, uh, that he was going to come on the show, which he fully intended to do, but he's busy. And um, we just couldn't work it out. So I just stayed stayed in contact and um, got the call last week. That hey, you know, you're in. He's in town. You're going to go see him. Do you want to do this? <laughs> like, it's, hell like, yeah. it's like getting called up from the minor leagues. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. And so Alice was uh, so incredibly generous with his time, and his staff is wonderful. The staff at Mystic Lake, wonderful. All the people he surrounds himself are just super, super nice people, and they help pull the whole thing together. And a big thank you to my buddy Kyle, who came down with me to do all of that, helped me with all of the lighting. We made sure everything was right. He ran all of the audio and video so we didn't screw something up. And, yeah, it turned out great. He gave us a – oh, someone dropping a load. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the water again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tommy. <laughs> I heard everybody come home like, God, please don't flush the toilet. Please don't flush the <laughs> Just, if you're new to this, I swear to God. Right above right. Lisa, where she's recording, is the bathroom. So you get to hear the toilet flush. 
Was like it a one? Was it a all in the family? Was it a one or a two flusher? <laughs> Where's Brian? He's upstairs. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> so, anyways, but yeah, it, nice, Tommy. It, it, don't worry, don't worry. So it was just it was a great interview. He gave us uh, a, a really big chunk of time to talk, and so about, we're going about a half to half hour, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but not quite, but close. And then we we put it up. So look for it. I don't know where we're going to do it. Are we going to do like a 0.5, like a uh, I, you just just the YouTube channel that you're watching this video on? It's going yeah. to be video only. I don't think we're going to post. I don't know. Maybe I'll post the audio. But it, it's up to you. Just go to, go to YouTube and you'll you'll find the Alice Cooper interview. It's the yeah. three sides on the side, which was coined by Mr. Eric Singer. So we're giving him full. Sure. I like that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Got to give credit where credit's due. You came up with it. Fortunately, unfortunately, Eric said that, but Gene and Paul don't respect us. <laughs> they don't even like you. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I am a huge Alice Cooper fan. Like, how can you not be? He's like oh, the Godfather. Yes, are like right here. They're and he, I love Alice that much. And and he's got an all new show, all new stage setup, and he's playing the eighties stuff. Yeah, he changed about 80% of the set. So you're going to get Escape, Steven, um, Raped and Freezin. I mean, there's so much variety. Moses there. on Moses White Yes. Oh, yeah. What did you huh? say, Mark? I'm sorry. Oh, Roses on White Lace is back. In yeah. Place. Roses on White Lace? Yeah. Yeah. From the Raise Your Fist and Yell album. Yeah, it's it's a it's just a great set list, and it's neat because I'd say about eighty percent of it is different than what you saw over the last five years, whether you saw him on the Motley Crue tour or you saw him on his own. So Bad of Nails, isn't that? Huh? Bad, 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 Bad of Nails was on there. Then they play Bad of Nails too. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. from that's Trash. Cool. Yeah, no they, trash though. They so. Play trash. You get out there and support him and watch the video. You guys will get a kick out of it. So we're, we did it all for you. Speaking of which, did uh, I, I'm, uh, you'll probably make me go get them. But uh, did you guys uh, participate in Record Store Day? Well, uh, no. some, somebody participated on my behalf. I'd oh, like... us too. By the way, thank oh, yes. you. Th thank, yes. thank you to Ken at E1 who sent, first of all, this beautiful. Oh wow! Fraley's Comet live record store day, first time on vinyl. It's a very cool photo. Yeah, it's very cool. And and by the, the extra way, that, bonus, that's different than the the old one that you had because the that one's from England, correct, Mike? Not not that the Ace Fraley. Who released the Alice Cooper one? Well, this one I got from Ken as well. Yeah, you won. Oh, okay. Yeah, he sent me like uh, the J and Bob silent silent Bob. Oh, so he was he was probably just cleaning out his promo closet. Right. It was cool. I I can't. Oh, wait for it was that. awesome was coming nice. home to find these two beautiful <laughs> vinyl nice LPs. Yeah, get those out there, nice. guys, and buy those two. Support E One because they're putting out some really cool stuff. And Ken gets a special uh, shout out because I know. Even though he won't admit it because he's so humble, he has a lot to do with some of those cool projects that you're seeing coming out on Record Store Day. Yep, he's a fan. Oh, well, I wanted to I wanted to get a little bit more Alice love. Did you guys pick up the Billion Dollar Babies live? I haven't yet. I haven't. I, I, again, I have all that stuff upstairs. I forgot to bring it, it down. It looks like Cheap Trick released a couple cool items. I, I bought that, too. Oh. Uh, I, have, I, I got the single, and I got the... Uh, <laughs> I got the single and I got the live show. And by the way, big fucking shout. Yeah, nice. I just realized what you did. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you got the Mr. Big Stuff bell. Ping, everything. <laughs> so, so, anyways, big shout out to my buddy Paulie in New York. You're the man. Um, he, he hooked me up. He took care of me. Uh, it was even like last year, too, because I really wanted that Devo box set. And, uh, and he hooked me up for Record Store Date Tommy. <laughs> from, from last That's year. Awesome. That is fucking awesome. This whole show is going to be nothing but a bell ringing. You realize that, Tommy? Yeah, awesome. yeah, every time, every time Mark tells us that he's got something, you're getting the bell. Yeah. It's the oh Mr. God. Big Stuff thing. I just we call it yes. the Big Stuff Bell. Anytime, yes. I'm gonna, you know, okay, I got. You, you, you got to, you got to be quick though, Tommy. I know. I'm working on it. 
<laughs> it takes a while. It does. It does. I'm trying to think of the, all the stuff I got. Um, also, too, did you, I, it's a band I've been championing. Championing. I say that I can't say that word every week. I try saying, it. um, the new Starcrawler. You guys, you guys, no, gotta check them out. Later. Oh, um, go ahead. Did you were you say no, something? I'm else? just saying they're a new band from L.A. Um, they're fucking awesome. And if you like Lisa, you like Alice Cooper. She's like a young Alice. Really? Oh, she she what's, is. What's the name again? Starcrawler. Star I'll, Star okay, I'll go get it. Um, also, too, I want to mention that uh, Blackfield Brides has Blackfield Brides has a new EP out. Yep. And I was telling Andy the other day, uh, I've heard one song so far, which is Vengeance, something Vengeance. It might be one of the best things they've ever done. Are uh, they going so, on tour? Yeah, they're going on tour with In This Moment, which how cool is that? And then two other support acts. Here. D.E.D. and somebody else. But, I mean, Black Veil Brides and In This Moment Together, it doesn't get cooler than that. So check out their new EP. The stuff is really, really solid. They got rid of their bass player. They have a new bass player, but everybody else is there. Um, yeah, go check out and support Andy, too. Oh, that's and, cool. <clears throat> new star crawl. Now. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. The chick singer, is she's just insane. I'm gonna have to listen to that. No, one of their old single, one of their old singles. If you just want to check it out on YouTube, is uh, "I Love LA," and also another one is called "Ants." And that video is just oh. fucking sweet, man. So, anyways, uh, if you're looking for some new rock, um, check out Star Starcrawler. Um, Black Veil Brides are coming to Atlanta on March 26th. Within go. this moment, yes. Within this moment. Go, Lisa, go. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, you gotta sound go. so excited. Okay. Can I wear a Steeler shirt? Well, oh, yes. Yes. You have to. Yeah, actually, you do because he's a huge Cleveland fan. No, nope. he's Bengals. 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 And that's even yeah. funnier because they suck. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, get the get the new Motorhead reissues because they have live concerts. Was, was that was, was that the Grammy award winning album? No, it was not. No, it was not. <laughs> it would have been. Way, sorry, I'm it, struggling a little bit. I, Mark, I guess I got it would have been cold. Grammy award winning if we know who was involved. I know. I know. Sorry, I, my produce. my voice is struggling a little bit here. So hold on, I got a cough. Yeah. Poor Mark. Oh, look at that. He actually muted his mic. Wow. He's getting better. <laughs> He's getting good. No, I, I, you know, it's funny because I don't have, like, I don't, I feel fine. It's just, I, I'm starting getting some bronchitis, and okay. man, that just, that just fucking kicks my Is head. the weather nasty up there? It's damp and cold. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened in Boston today. It was a big snowstorm, and then they're, like, shoveling out and... It's like fifty here. Yeah, you know what's funny? Last week, Monday, a week ago from from yes, yeah, so eight days ago, when I got home from hockey, I started. Do you guys have bronchitis? Do you guys ever get it? I don't. No, so. Yeah, cause once you get it, you like always get it. Unfortunately, and it started flaring up, and then by the end of the weekend, it was. And again, that's the funny thing about it. I feel fine. It's just it. You can you need know, anyways. You just start having some breathing issues, and it really starts. Especially like right now, if I'm talking a lot, next thing I know, it <laughs> seizes everything up. So all right, well then, Mark just shouldn't talk during the episode. I'm not, yeah. So which some a big section of our audience is going, thank yes. fucking god. So uh, take it away, guys. <clears throat> all right. So so on the on the topic of having fun, we kind of felt like you know no guest. Although I think we're going to try and get a guest in in the next week or two weeks. Um, Oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Before you go any further, I have to read one comment because it is absolutely fantastic from this week's show with Izzy Presley. This is Ooh. from Almost Human. Izzy's back. You <laughs> must you, hate ratings. Do you know who Almost Human is? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, all right. It's, yeah. it's Dr. Fock, people. Yeah. So read it again, Tommy. <laughs> Izzy is back. You must hate ratings. <laughs> read the whole thread because I replied to him. Okay, so then Mike says, no, we just hate you. <laughs> just buy our ratings, ask Aaron. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> uh, he, then Ralph says, hating me is hating ratings. 
Uh, Michael says, hating you is what all the smart people do. <laughs> Ralph comes back with, so you're saying you are the only smart person on the planet? I would add, um, uh, I don't want to use the name. Uh, I can't read that piece. You know? <laughs> no, just, leave, just leave it at, you You think you're the only smart person on the planet. The planet, yes. And then um, Daryl jumps in. Brand old is worth a douche. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then, then 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 I replied there should be one, um, one more reply from me to the smartest oh, comment. Uh, yeah, I am the smartest person in podcasting. If you don't believe me, just ask. There you go. So yeah, leave it to Ralph. I you know. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to get off on a tangent, but that's that's No, I I la it was the first comment on this week's episode. I mean, obviously Ralph is waiting, waiting, eager for an Izzy episode because he jumped yeah. on it right away and commented before anybody else. So well, I, I think there's I think there's sexual tension between the two of them. Okay. I, I think they've got man crush on each other and they watch each other's podcasts every week and it's not what they're. Do, do we need? Do we need to get a box of tissues and some jergen? Exactly. Do, do we do we need to get both of them on the show to relieve that sexual tension? I think so. That after dark show, right? I don't want to do that. <laughs> we have to host that one. I'm not interested. <laughs> I'll meet you that one. As you were saying. So we're going to have some fun discussion. So I threw out a topic that we can start with. Our three go-to albums. And obviously, since it's a Kiss podcast, we can start with what are your three go-to Kiss albums? And then from there, we can expand to any artist we want. Sound fun? Yeah. And and, and I'd like to, to mention something before we start. I was thinking a lot about this this afternoon. And one of the things that I've really enjoyed looking at is all of these people's vinyl collections on the Rockologist's Facebook page, Tom Shannon's page. Uh, there's a guy, he's got like freaking 20 crates of records, and these guys have like 10 copies of Dynasty and on and on and on, which made me think records, okay, so then you can't pick songs, you've got to pick records, which will take me back to childhood again. So it's like it kind of changed my perspective a little bit about thinking about which ones I would go to. Yeah, because this, the, again, this is your three go-to albums. You don't put an album on physical vinyl cd or even hit the play on spotify on an album if you only want to hear one song right you, you're, you it's the you, whole you want to put an album on and get immersed in it what are your three go-to kiss albums tommy you go first alive one dynasty and the paul stanley solo album Good choices. I, I I wouldn't. I've got special memories for Dynasty, but it wouldn't be a go-to album. And well, and the reason I chose those three is, is I like every single song on all three of those records. Every single song. There's not one I would skip. Now there are other albums in their uh, catalog I could say the same about, but since we're doing three, those would be the first three choices. Okay, Lisa. Unmasked, Hotter Than Hell, and Revenge. That's an interesting selection. Yeah. Especially Unmasked. I guess I, I didn't love, know that about you. I love Unmasked. It's a great record. So that's why you're on three sides of the coin. <laughs> Don't fake it. We're going to need you on our radio show to sing two sides of the coin. I will. Oh, oh, this is going to be a fun show. <laughs> well, that was so funny last year too on the on the boat during the Kiss cruise. They're doing two sides of the coin, and Phil and Jeremy and Ryan are singing three sides of the coin. Yeah, the I was just gonna say, I think I'd probably go three sides of the coin before I said two. So. Yeah, yeah. We've co-opted that song. Sorry, people. Yeah, <laughs> Mark, your three go-to Kiss albums. Three go to. It's funny because I actually gave this some thought because um, 
All right. I there there has been three that I've been going. Well, the one isn't is a gimme. My like Kiss Alive is the greatest album, not just Kiss. It's the greatest album ever made. Period in the history of music. So Kiss Alive, Rock and Roll Over, and Sonic Boom. Oh, Sonic the- Boom, really? Wow, excellent. It's a fucking incredible record, start it's to finish. Bad. Props to Mark for doing that. Well, it's no process. That's my honest. No, I three. mean that's that's like me loving crazy nights. Mark but you thought it. about it. That's we're we're, we're applauding the yeah, fact. Yeah, no, you good. Put in effort. Stayed. Cool. You, you colored within the lines. Yeah, you you, you didn't break the rules. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I really do see a, a, a line between those three. They're just both. They're all three of them are four on the floor, hard rock albums. You know what I mean. There's, there's no <laughs> pop diddly. There's no, you know, pop diddly. Those are fucking records you can just put on and every. None of that unmasked and dynasty crap. I, I like unmasked. Shut up. I like unmasked too, but I, I want my kiss. You know, hot Where and. Where do you want your kiss, Mark? Mm-hmm. We'll get that <laughs> later, baby. <clears throat> And, and and for those of you watching, Lisa's actually busy. She's got a paying customer on her phone right oh, now. Boy. <laughs> uh, it's busy season for me at work, people, okay? It's finals time. Finals? What are you, a teacher? Uh, I work in the higher ed. Wax well. on, wax off. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my three go to Alive 2, e- definitely yeah. my number one. Always going to be the number one. Number two, rock and roll over. Number three, crazy nights. I would have, I and I, I can easily tell you why. Why? Because rock and roll over is the very first Kiss album you've ever owned, and you drop the needle on "I Want You." It just also happens to be a great yes. Kiss album. And you just love the whole thing from beginning to end. Alive too, because you've always touted that as one of your favorites. And then, of course, Crazy Nights because you have the outfit and you're rocking. Because I have the outfit. The minute, Michael, the minute that Michael finished, the first thing that came into my head was, I want you, I need you, because two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> now, there, there's definitely two or three other albums that are very close contenders yeah. for the top three. I mean, I, I, I could throw in Revenge. I could throw in Destroyer. It's um, funny that none of us said Destroyer. Because I've listened to it so much. Yeah. And they've played so many of the songs from the record that I just, that's what it is for me. It's not that it's not solid from front to back. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's in a different category because of the popularity of it. I, I would say the same thing about some of those Zeppelin albums. What what Michael said, though, is like your three go-tos. And I did it like today. If I had to run out of the house and grab three Kiss CDs to take on a trip, those are the three today I would have grabbed. You know, you, you could also liken it to a Desert Island disc. If you What were your three <laughs> Desert Island discs? These are the only three Kiss albums you can ever listen to again. What would they be? Right. Well, and then that that's the first homework question I'd like to throw out there for everybody. And it doesn't have to necessarily be KISS, but how often do any of you think about... Hi, Lily. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> he kicks me out. <laughs> nice, how often Mom. Do any of you think about... I had to bring her a beer. Apparently she can't live two seconds without some stupid beer. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, Lisa has her daughter bringing her beer live on the show because she can't live without it. Twenty dollar bill, bill, and say, "Get me a sixer." You know what's funny is that we were all real quiet, rolling. <laughs> is that what you were texting her? Bring me a beer. That's what it was. Oh, you were telling us it was work season. related, and you were asking your daughter God. to bring you a beer. Yeah. I was answering an email, and I thought, man. All right, what kind of beer did you have? That's that's all she drinks. Drinking goat 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 piss. You should have a shot of Jack in that. Oh, yeah. 
anyways, I'm just curious, like for the listeners, how, how many of you guys end up thinking about a record and then actually sit down and take the time to listen to the whole thing from beginning to end? I think back in the day you used to, but now with shuffle and stuff, you don't, it's not very, you know what I mean? I, I would say right. for the most part, I still tend to, li- if, if the time is available, I will listen to an album start to finish. But you'll do it on Spotify, right? Well, I, yeah, I always do it on Spotify because it's fast, yeah. it's convenient, it's where whatever device I have. But I listen, I will like go find an album that I like, an old album, a classic album, a new album, and I'll listen to the whole album from start to end. If the time permits it, that's what I do. If I know that I've only got 15 minutes, then I probably just hit a playlist and do some sort of shuffle. Right. But if I got time and I need just music playing for the next three hours in the background, it's albums. Because I don't like vinyl. I never have. It was always a pain in the ass to keep clean and sounding good. Oh my God, get, been a great show, Tommy. Ken, hey, Ken, Ken, Ken Gullick, you can take Tommy off future vinyl shipments. I didn't get any vinyl. I miss the artwork Ooh. and I miss the format. But given the choice, to Michael's point, it's just easier to do it that way. It just is. Oh, it is. Versus... You hit start and you just let it play. But, you know, it, at least a lot of the albums I listen to, or what we all listen to, the whole album is the musical experience. It right. wasn't just one song on that album. Like, I listened to, just a few days ago, was like the 40th anniversary of Pink Floyd, The Wall. I love it. Listen to that front to back, you know, the whole thing, because, it, you know, it's that's how you've got to listen to Pink Floyd the Wall. You can't just go in and listen to one song. That's how you, you know? listen to Pink Floyd in general. Yeah. You got to listen to the whole fucking album. Yeah. Wish you were here. I, you know, you know, Mike, all kidding aside, Tommy, one of the things that I do love about vinyl down here in, in the Kiss Cave and what used to be the normal basement which is now all kiss. I do have one. I have a recliner, one chair, you know, lazy boy. And it's right in front of my stereo. And when I come home from work, sometimes I close the door. I I walk over, set that needle down, kick back. It's like the Max L commercial. But let me tell you, and I turn that volume to stun. (laughs) <laughs> and I just sit and and I tell you a, an album like Wish You Were Here or something you know or metal I like metal a lot um, from from Pink Floyd that that just does it man that's 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 great stuff I, yeah I, I don't know anyone could listen to like one Pink Floyd song maybe well, like impossible on, on on any of these great classic albums you just to you know could you listen to just one song off of a live and then go somewhere else? It's like, no, no, I couldn't do that with a live too. I got to listen. I listen to everything, but side four. I can't stand, I can't stand the guitar playing on side four of kiss alive too. Well, it's not Grammy award winning. I know that much. It wasn't back then. But, um, you know, I, I just, for me, it, it's not that I don't like the experience of vinyl. It just, when CDs came along, I was so thrilled, you know, to have the whole thing on one disc, you pop it in, you can hear it, listen to the whole thing beginning to end. But I think that's one of the things I need to get back to. I haven't spent enough time actually listening to music and just, I don't know about you guys. I don't know where you find the time, but for me, it's like with all the stuff we've got going on, I don't have or it's hard for me to find the time to just sit back and listen to a record. You know, let me for, just tell you, as you get a little bit older, because your daughter's still in high school, right? No, she's out now. Oh, she's not. But but still, she's. I noticed when my kids got a little bit older, that's, that's when you I, I could have done this ten years ago. Could not have done what I do now ten years ago. Obviously, you can see from my household, I can't really do anything at all. So no, I get you, that. You, you, can, you can order your kids to bring you beer in the basement. Well, that's called good training. <laughs> no, that's called busted. That's what that's called. You know, I, and, and and this may sound odd to some people, but my preferred way of listening to music and a whole album 
is is not over speakers, not over the little earbuds. I want a nice over my ears set of cans. Because to me, that's the total immersion experience. I just, I have so, like Pink Floyd The Wall, I remember coming home, buying that album when it first came out. It, yeah, it was, when it first came out, it was kind of a big deal, but it wasn't a huge hit yet. And I remember going up to my bedroom and plugging in my, I don't know if they were JVCs or whatever headphones. You turn the lights off and you just lay down on the floor and you just crank that stereo and everything is gone. You yeah. know, no lights out, you can't hear I miss anything. Those days. So that's how I like to listen to my music now. Even even if it's on Spotify, I've got a a pair of uh, Bluetooth headphones and I'll just put those on and Katrina and Thule will be watching some video or some kid show or something like that and I'll just be like put my headphones on and just sit back and and enjoy it. Um Michael, I, I have to I have to share a story with you that way. When my son uh, who's now 27, but when he went away to college, it was his first time being away from home. He was a little homesick and stuff. And I said, you know, my son's name's Ian. I said, you know, he, I said, you know what I, you know, whenever, because I went away to boarding school and stuff, I said, I used to like, on in days like that, you got to get away from, I mean, you can't get away because you're, you're, you're away at school, but right. I, I'm like, put some headphones on. And I said, the record that used to really do it for me was uh, Rush's uh, All the Worlds, or yeah, yeah, not All the Worlds. Uh, oh, Christ. But anyways, it's got the, it begins with the, the it's Cygnus X1. If you know that part of the, uh, uh, A Farewell to Kings, excuse me. And I said, I used to like putting that on because it's got like the part where they're drifting through, through space and the and the bass comes in, boom, down, da, 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 da. And I said, you know, when I was a kid and, on days like that, I just like I pretend, you know, in your head, you have those. It's almost like you're watching a movie in your mind. Yep. And it was cool because he texts me back. He's like, "Thanks, Dad. That that did the trick." And I'm like, "That's what music can do." And again, Michael, you're absolutely right. Listening with headphones, that's a good, that's a good way. But I, now that I'm older, physically getting up to set the needle down and going back and sitting down, that's almost part of the therapy for me. And I and just having the vinyl kind of shake the basement, you know, and just it's there's just something about it. And I've been I've been rebuying some certain records because I, I've, I've got a really nice, you know, high end needle and everything on my stereo. And when uh, a couple of years ago, when I met Glenn, he, I thank you, Tommy. <laughs> you never disappoint my friend. Hey, Tom, Tom, real real quick. Can we also add to the bell anytime a beer is brought to Lisa? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They're going to be like. <laughs> Shut up, Tommy. <laughs> Keep drinking, Lisa. Yeah, I've been at social events with you. <laughs> exactly. But, but anyways, you know, um. Right now, I've, I've got uh, a Deep Purple's Made in Europe on there, and that 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 version of Burn on there is like my favorite version. It's one of my favorite songs of all time, but the version on that live record and putting that on, man, and going back and just like you said, Michael, it's like the old Memorex thing. Yep. And cranking that, it really does. It just eliminates stress, and it's just such a great feeling. And then you know, after the fourth song or whatever you got to get up again go flip the record over but that's part of it you know i mean you got to kind of work for it part of part of why i like it so much is i for me it feels like when the lights are out eyes are closed headphones are on the only sense that is working is your ears and it enhances the music even more so it's like all of your brain functions are paying attention to the music I, I, this may sound weird, but I'll go to concerts, live concerts, and there'll be times where I will close my eyes at the concert and just listen to the live music, and it like just sucks me in even more because now you're you're hearing the notes, you're hearing the playing, you're hearing the vocals, you're not distracted by the visuals and the crowd and everything else. There, there's just something, there's something <clears throat> satisfying about listening to music that way. 
Well, so maybe we should take a left turn here now because we all have identified our three go-to albums and each one of us share, uh, you know, two, three records that we think are must listen to with the headphones from beginning to end. Well, well, maybe along with that, but where I wanted to take this was after we did the kiss round, let's just each go around and we can each pick any band. Mark, sit here and go, okay, my three go-to Deep Purples. Tommy, my three go-to garbage albums. You know, Lisa, my three go-to Pretty Boy Floyds. <laughs> they haven't had three, have they? <laughs> they have three? I don't know. Um, anyway, that let's... My, my best, my top three albums. So, so, so why don't we do that? Let's, let's, you can pick any artist now, and if it's a headphone album, make note of it. Okay, but can we do more than one artist? Or oh yeah, yeah. No, we'll we'll just keep going around until we feel bored. Okay. Okay. So Tommy, why don't you start? Pick an artist. Um, I suppose I should do Cheap Trick. So I'm gonna say the um, Bang Zoom Crazy Hello. Ooh, nice. Really. Yeah, there's something about that record, even though I like the latest one. Tommy, Tommy give yourself about the seriously. That's a fucking good one. Ring no. the bell. There you go. <laughs> that, uh, ring that your own bell, out. Tommy. Yeah, that one, and then um, probably the 1997 self-titled release on Red Ant. Oh, Tommy, you're really it, going a, yeah. a little off. And then my third one, which is why I brought that question up earlier about vinyl that I've been thinking a lot about that I want to listen to from beginning to end is Next Position, Please. I just love that record you so much. A three ain't bad. Uh, <laughs> that's a two, two, that's Tommy. Great Tommy, that's, 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 a, that's, I, that's an interesting that's threesome. Okay for me. Huh? What? I said that was an interesting threesome from Cheap Trick. Yeah, well, because it covers a lot of different eras, and those three records all have extremely strong songs to me. So if I was going to switch out Next Position, please, to make Mark a little happier, I would do One on One. That would be the now, other one. Okay. Now the only reason I picked Next Position, please, because it's been so long since I've listened to it from front to back and it's got you know why oh why oh why heaven's falling um borderline i can't take it there's a lot of really good songs on that record did that single not take off i can't take it i fucking love that song uh, I, uh, tonight it's you should have been a top 10 hit and it wasn't i agree I'm yeah with you. so again all kidding is like i i matter of fact tommy and i were just talking about one-on-one within what the last week or so we were talking about how great yeah. that album. and and that's a come i'm like i i couldn't picture taking Next position over one on one. I just think one on one is is that's such a special record. It's, it again, is. That's one of, you're like. How did this not become huge? That record right. is so but, fucking good. But I pick the the next position, please, because there may be people out there that don't know it as well, and there's some real gems on it. And someone had remastered one song or two songs off that record on YouTube and put a bunch of bass back into it, and it completely changes the whole feel of the record. Because I don't think Todd Rundgren's a very good producer. Yeah, just add, just just see the uh, first New York Dolls album. They should add Eddie Kramer to it. Well, yeah, he ruined that, but that's a whole other thing. But Jack Douglas came in and finished it, I believe. I don't know, I might be wrong. Um, who's up next? Lisa. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to do Alice Cooper. Um, Zipper Catches Skin. Ooh. I love that album. Um, Zorro. I thought I thought we were all just reacting to that thought. <laughs> I was actually. Every time I see the little blood, I'm like, oh god damn. All oh, that hurts. He even mentions it in one of the songs. Um, but let's see, zipper catch of skin. Um, let's say, raise your fist and yell. Wow. And Ghost, Ghost. billion dollar babies. Good nice. choices. Good choices. Yes. Mark. Yeah, no reaction from you guys whatsoever. I was waiting for Ghost to Hell. That's what I was hoping for. I'm very eclectic um, when it comes to Alice because I'm all about like the ones that 
like probably my favorite ones are all the ones that he doesn't even remember recording. Like Zipper Catch a Skin, Dada. Much 1970 to 1980. I, know, I, I saw them. Because when I met him, I told him those were my favorites. He goes, I don't even remember recording those. And yeah. I'm like, well. I saw okay. the Special Forces tour. That was fucking insane. Just fucking <clears throat> insane. He went on, what was it, Tom Snyder? With, yes. Uh, on the Special Forces. It looked like he was dead. Yes. Yeah, it was, was about dead. like that thin. And, yeah. Yeah, those are my favorites. Data, Special Forces, Zipper Catch a Skin, and From the Inside. What about Flush the Fashion? Or Flush, thank you, Flush the Fashion. Too. Thank you. That's the one I always forget. Yes. I wish he would redo Talk Talk and 7 and 7 is on his new EP because that's kind of the music. If you, if, By the way, if you get a chance to go out, Alice has a new Breadcrumbs EP, and he's paying tribute to all the, like, the garagey Detroit bands from yeah let me tell you those songs because i don't know if you know those are both covers if you're a big alice cooper fan i don't know if you know that that seven and seven is is a cover and so is talk talk i know talk talk was but i did not know seven and seven is yes seven and seven is is a talk interesting yes those are both covers see people you learn something new every day (laughs) well much like you lisa i'm i'm right up there with with kiss and cooper just i'm a total geek too love uh love love alice um my, my turn now? Your turn. Yeah. Well, next to Kiss Alive, uh, Ted Nugent's Double Live Gonzo. I could put that on for months and never get sick of it. That that record, if you're a guitar player, should be in your guitar playing Bible. <laughs> um, that album is just so fucking over the top incredible. Every second on, on that is just... a guitar playing at its zenith um absolutely love 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 that record and again that's right up there depends when you ask me kiss alive or ted nugent double live gonzo they're my two go-tos um after it's funny too because when when you mentioned that earlier today michael about you know your go-to albums I, i'm like god <clears throat> i think just about all my favorite records are live albums um and I think maybe because, you know, just loving music as much as I do, I tend to love the bands who could bring it live. You know what I mean? Bands who, when you listen to them in the studio, and then when you listen to this, the live version, it's like a billion times better. You know, I wanna, I, much like Kiss, although, is, is this in my top three, depending if, but I, I love like the early Frampton, and then when you get to Frampton Comes Alive, you know, Something's happening. The studio version is good, but when you get to the live version, it's like way better, you know. But anyways, uh, well, I tell you what, we'll give a little love to Frampton here. Well, um, no, 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 don't change the rules. You got to stick to Ted Nugent. Ted Three go to Ted's. No, I can do whatever I want, <laughs> and I'm gonna. All right, then we're gonna go. We're gonna, Thanks, <laughs> then we're gonna go with humble pie. Um, with with uh, with uh, this just totally blows the whole the whole theme of the show is just artists and then we come around again and we pick multitudes. Yeah, don't be a dick. Do three Ted Nugent records. <laughs> or are you saying I, there I, aren't I, any other good? Well, then you're not a then you're not a Ted Nugent fan. All right, then we're we'll go from there. We'll go to the very 1975 self titled with all the killer crap on it. Stranglehold, just what the doctor ordered. Yeah. Uh, Motor City Madhouse, you know, Storm Troopin'. That album, it just, it, again, just a, a hard rock classic. And then I'm going to go with, well, well, we'll stay with the Derek St. Home years, a uh, free-for-all. Um, again, that that record, too, just a, a guitar clinic. So Double Live Gonzo, uh, Ted Nugent, the self, uh, self-titled 1975. And uh, free for all, you know. Fuck it, Cat Scratch Fever. God damn, which one would I pick? Which one's your go-to? Oh no, no I'm because I'm gonna have to. You just asked me my my go-to. Everything they did with Derek St. Holmes, who was one a gets pastor. eliminated forever. What's that? One gets eliminated forever. You're you're you're, le- le- you're leaving on a jet airplane, and you can only take three Ted Nugent albums. Which ones are they? Double Live Gonzo. Free for all, cat scratch fever. <laughs> all right, before he changes his mind, my turn. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I, I'm I'm following Tommy. I'm going to do cheap trick, and oh. mine probably falls more in line with what a lot of cheap trick fans might say. But I I'll start with that Budokan. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, the whole the whole re-release with nope, both nope, pieces the, or just the first one? Just the original release. I'm with okay. Mike, man. I'm with Mike on that. Okay. Yeah. Those expandeds are cool, but there's nothing like listening to the yeah, original. Exactly. There's nothing like that original at Budokan album. It never fails. Um, then Dream Police. It is probably right. about as perfect a Cheap Trick studio album as they've ever recorded. Mm-hmm. Um, and then One on One. Because yeah. I, I, I remember back when these albums came out, so All Shook Up came out after Dream Police. And at the time, I was like, wow, this is just a little bit way out in left field for Cheap Trek. This is yeah. getting a little experimental, a little odd. I love it now, but back then I just couldn't get it. And they followed All Shook Up with One on One, and I was like, fuck yes. They're back as a rock band. This is a rock this, album. This album kicks ass. Period. You know, she, she's she's yeah. tight. Everything on that album, front to back, is Perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love, I love, love one on one. I mean, I, I, that one I play a lot, just any time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so those are my three go-to <laughs> cheap trick albums. Release the next round. Oh, I thought you were you're, you're starting. Up next. The- oh, next. Oh, I'm going to choose Elton John. Oh. Hold on. Are we sticking with the same bands again? Yeah. Why not? Give people a perspective. Yeah, your three go to from another artist now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Awesome. Needs no uh, explanation at all. The thing is just about as perfect as a double album can be. Um, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. That would be number two. And number three would uh, be Don't Shoot Me. I'm Only the Piano Player. Those are the three that I could listen to back to back without fail and i love everything on both of those records or all three of those records all right lisa okay billy joel Mm -hmm. turnstiles 50 seconds straight and the stranger excellent choices i like it a lot (laughs) okay let's see if mark can stick to the rules here look i'm throwing a a minor wrench into this because i can (laughs) you're going to choose poison <laughs> oh, look at the time. Uh, the self first album by Montrose. That is just that's it. it. Music recorded rock gets no better. Um, then I'm gonna go with Gamma One and Gamma Two. Now, if you know those are Ronnie Montrose. Yeah, I was gonna say so. Mark, Mark, Mark's, 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 Mark's within the 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 judges will allow. Yeah, this because this is Ronnie Montrose. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ron, Ron it was basically, it was, you know, it's almost the same. Well, they, Denny Carmasi. Well, Denny Carmasi played drums on two. He didn't play drums on the first one. But uh, those, I tell you what, and, and again, I don't know if you guys know. I mean, now, now years from, you know, years later, everybody knows like uh, uh, Bad Motor Scooter and you know Rock Candy and stuff. But you guys know that that record, like took a decade or, or more to go gold i mean yeah that was just that first montrose album it was that slow of a word of mouth and now it's you know it's been plat that 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 first montrose album might have influenced more musicians yeah than any other album out there in that period in that era it is i tell you what i, I remember when i was learning to play the drums that record more than Kiss Alive or anything. Matter of fact, that's something Eric and I have talked about because he's a big Carmasi fan too. And th- the way I set my drums up is like the way Danny Carmasi sets his up. You know, um, that when I was a kid, if you guys know like Rock Candy and and uh, Bad Motor Scooter and stuff. And, and and again, you know, if you've never, what the point I was trying to get is this: if you like that record. You should go check out Gamma One and Gamma Two that Ronnie did because it's the same style, especially Gamma Two. Um, it's the same style of hard rock, and I, you know I got to do this. I got to throw in an honor, honorable mention for Warner Brothers Presents because that album is so freaking killer too. So 
which is which is the first Montrose album without Sammy Hagar, the Warner Brothers presents. But that's uh, that album too. Just you know, melt your face, hard rock. So that's it, Montrose. Right. Um, I'm gonna go sticks. Ooh. Uh, number one, Grand Illusion. Just a, a perfect album. Can't go wrong with Grand Illusion. Um, number two, Paradise Theater. Uh, really? I, yeah. You know, I, I part of Paradise Theater is the timeline. It, that was huge. I went to the shows. They were, I mean, Tommy, if you remember, they did like three sold out nights at the Met Center. I mean, Sticks was yeah. everywhere yeah, on that huge. Paradise Theater tour. And it, it it's a good album. And then I would probably say number three would be Pieces of Eight. I put that number one in my list of the ones you just listed. Of those you listed, not overall, because right. I'd go with Equinox over all those. It's it's it, it you know it's a tough toss up between Cornerstone, Pieces of Eight, and like Equinox. But I think I think Pieces of Eight, you know, Great White Hopes on there, Blue Collar Man's on there, Queen um, of Spades. Yeah, you know, it's 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 a solid rocking album you know it is yeah they really start to let things out with pieces of eight jy so, just tears up yep, on that right? yep so those are my three go-to sticks albums okay. tommy tommy i'm gonna do motley crew and you're all gonna flip out on me. well at least mark will uh saints of los angeles number one um dr feelgood and girls, girls, girls. Those are my three. I like Doctor Feelgood. Yeah, I just love those records. Ugh. I just I like the title. No, not like I love the title track. That's about as far as I can get into that album. See, I, I, don't, I don't even like the title track on that album. It's just that the that, that song's so overplayed, but the rest of the album is awesome. There you go, Mark. I know it's Lisa. Skipping right over me. Oh, it's Lisa. Lisa. Damn. I could see have, how I... have have some beer. Calm down. Yeah, I know. You're getting all loopy and shit. It's your uh, turn. Go. Yeah, my one beer, thanks. Uh I'm going with Queen. I'm going with Queen Two. The works. Ooh, and nice. sheer heart attack. Excellent. I want you. I need you. I, I just can't get into the works, man. It's just it's, there were some good songs on there, though. Okay, well, then give us after your, the game. They lost me after give the us game. Your three favorite Wham albums, then. <laughs> um, I'm going with my uh, favorite trio from Canada. We're gonna go with Rush. Um, my favorite Rush album, not even close, is uh, is Hemispheres. That is uh, that to me is. The be all end all. That is that's in my top five greatest albums of all time. That is Hemispheres is is just the shit. Um, then I'm gonna go with the, All the World's a Stage, uh, their first live record, and I'm gonna go with Twenty One Twelve. Solid. Solid. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going to go with Electric Light Orchestra. And this might be the only one where I've actually picked three albums that came out in a row. Although I'm not picking them in the same order they came out, but they came out in a row. First one, 1979's Discovery. Diary of Horace Wimp. I just love that song so much. The whole album is just great. Well, the artwork is so amazing on yeah. all of those. Yeah. Um, number two is 1977, Out of the Blue. You just can't go wrong with Out of the Blue. And again, m incredible artwork. I mean, that spaceship on the cover, it, it was when you open it up to the gatefold, inter the internal inside yeah. of the spaceship. It, that's one of those things, headphones on, just staring at that while you're listening to it. That's the way to do it. And then the third is 1981's Time. 
I, I, I couldn't get into anything really much after 1981's time because they started to lose the ELO sound and feel to me. But and and time was when I finally went and saw them in concert, Halloween night, St. Paul Civic Center, Hall and Oates opened. Oh, brutal. Yeah, it was like, ah, do I have to listen to your kisses on my list? Get these get these guys off of here. Um, so yeah, ELO, Discovery, Out of the Blue, and Time. Okay. Very good list. Should we do another round? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Van Halen. Ooh, good choice. Fair Warning. Diver Down. Ooh. And Women, and, children, women and Children First. Those are okay. my three. Lisa, honey. Lisa? Well, I was just thinking, I don't... Songs about beer? <laughs> I don't think I have another artist that I would... that I like that much. Really? Really? Mm -hmm. I could do this for, like, we could be here for, like, the next two weeks. <laughs> yeah, like, we're just what? getting started. Well, it's, but yeah, you know, I, I could be, too, in, in the sense that if you give me the chance to remind me of an artist... And then yeah, I go look I'm... at their discography and go, oh, yeah, there you go. That's exactly what I'm trying to think. Like, my daughter just said, what about Guns N' Roses? Well, yeah. well, how did she say that? Is she sitting off to the side bringing you beer again? Well, yeah, because Mark said, Michael said, should we do another round? Just <laughs> she, like, just ah! waved, she just waved at us. Tommy, 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 give yourself one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I'll do? Wait, okay, you know what? I'm going to have my husband help me because he's here. Can I help? And he yeah. likes... Ozzy. All right. Ozzy, so, go, Brian. What, Billy Eilish. Five? No, you have to pick top your top three that you like. That go, your go to. Go to Just albums. Billy Eilish. Oh, Dire Dire of a Madman. Dire of a Madman. By far. Um, probably Dire of a Madman, Blizzard of Oz. Um, it's kind of a toss up after that. Uh, Give Jake some love. Yeah, Jake. I, you know, <laughs> so you're just thinking. Probably Bark at the Moon, just because it has yeah. long and alone. Uh, and Rock and Roll Rebel, Waiting for Darkness. That has some good ones on. Yeah, Jake. It was funny because that was in my wheelhouse. I'm like, those would be my three. Although I do like you said, give Jake love. I prefer Jake with Badlands than with Ozzy. I think he's <laughs> he just was. I don't know. That was more his wheelhouse than Ozzy. Lisa, Lisa and, as he's talking, can you just move your mouth? <laughs> but he's not talking right now. God, is, this, no, is it that difficult? It's blonde. <laughs> here, just come in here, Brian. Here. Zach had some good ones too. There. What? There, oh, you can come in here. Now. Can I come in too? No. Bend down because now I just see your no. crotch. No, bring me a beer. That's what she said. <laughs> I'd, go, I'd go no rest for the wicked for the best, Jake. Or not Jake, uh, Zach. Um, I love every song on there. You know what? The lyrics kill me though. Like Devil's Daughter. The lyrics are so stupid. That's the thing. Don't blame, don't blame Ozzy. He didn't write any of it. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, like Demon Alcohol, like killer riffs, just terrible lyrics that I just can't even listen to anymore. Even some of the Jake stuff, like Secret Loser. Just some of the lyrics are just so bad that it's it's just a product of the time. Yeah, uh, but um, the title track, though, was... "Ultimate Sin," that album is just that that riff is just so fucking cool, especially with the way the drums come in. Doom, doom, yeah, doom, 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 doom. that's awesome. Um, then uh, "Ultimate Sin" has some great stuff. Just everybody complains about the production, like the very keyboard. You know, Ron Nevelson. I like that record a lot, actually. I do too, but uh, I. Th think like ozzy just mentioned if he can go back and remix one album that would be it well sharon won't let him because of the songwriting thing so <laughs> see brian has a more eclectic I, well not more eclectic but like he has more artists that he listens to i am very weird i only have like four and then it's very sporadic from there all right well brian can join us for this brian you just did ozzy Brian, we're going to give you a mulligan. Get in the chair. We'll give yeah, you a chair. Yeah. 
So Lisa, uh, Lisa, bring him a beer. Is, now pick pick an artist other than Ozzy. Pick an artist, and the, the, t- the if you had to just right now run out of the house, you're going on vacation. You had to grab three discs by one artist. Where your go to disc of one art? You got to name the artist. You and mentioned then... Van Halen already, so yep. you can do it. You can do Van Halen. That's okay. Yeah. But they've already said Kurt Warning already. Because Tommy screwed up and put Diver Down in there, which I like, but that's I not. I like Diver Down too. I, I think it's uh, huh. See? a lot of covers, but it's still a cool album. No, no, Thank I just said much. that it's good. But if you're going to just grab three, that ain't one of them. Oh my, no, my three are uh, are Fair Warning, <laughs> two, and Women and Children First, probably. And the first one is just kind of played for me. It's like Blizzard yeah. of Oz, you know. I, I loved it for years, but it's, and it's like Zeppelin. Thing. Like I can't listen to the first eight Zeppelin records. But it like so. <laughs> well, it's funny, and and I'm I, this I, since we already did Van Halen because I, I want to move on from there. But I don't. I you got to give some love to uh, a different kind of truth. I fucking still play the shit out of that. Yeah, I think it's that. like Chinatown. It has some good stuff on it. God, yeah. out of space. Hey, out of space is classic Van Halen. The Sammy yeah, stuff doesn't get as much love, though, and I think as time goes on, I like the Sammy stuff. Some of the Sammy stuff has appealed to me as get I've got late, home. Lisa. <laughs> get him a beer, Lisa. Just go get a beer. I'm mad because I said I like the Sammy the stuff. The turkey pot pie. Okay, Mar- 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 Mark, 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 you're up. On the uh, what was it for the fifty one fifty tour? I thought they were great on that tour. There's no beers around here because Lisa's pretty good at that. She said two of them. Yeah, one for each hand. <laughs> wow, Lisa, we missed the second beer. God. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do now you know, because I can't separate them, and I'll do it quick so we can move on to the next one. I'm going ACDC, but I'm doing the Brian years and the Bond years, so I'll do it quickly. The best of the Bond era is uh, Let There Be Rock is by far just one of the most incredible records of all time. Power Age and Highway to Hell from the Bond era. Yeah, um, from the Brian era, I'm going flick of the switch for those about to rock. And as, as played out as it is, I, I got to go with Back in Black. But I still think for those about to rock is a better record than Back in Black. Back in Black may be more, not that for those about to rock is any clams on it, but Back but in look, Black. Evil, is- evil Walks, COD. Um, Spellbound, Spellbound alone is is the like the best song on both those records. I fucking that is just an evil fucking tune, man. I love that song. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Rush before, and I'm in a minority here, but I like Triumph more than Rush as far as Canadian. I could do a, I could do a big yeah. I would, I would, Triumph was what you know. A, a, I love them. Never Surrender, yeah. play, uh, uh, just a game, and either Progressions of Power or Rock and Roll Machine. You know, Rush lost me at when Signals came out, and I know people. You know, people I'm with you. Up turns and but it, it was just different. Um, it was bad. It was just, and my taste changed too. And Brian, did you see the Rush documentary? Everybody said that they're like at 1980 they lost me. After moving pictures, it was like fucking forget it. I'm well, the same way. The thing is though, Exit Stage Left was after moving pictures, so I really say after Exit Stage Left is when they they lost me. Signals had some moments. Yeah, well, I like analog. analog kid, kid. A great solo in that, but yeah, yeah, that you know when they started doing like uh, you know uh, New World Man, the, you could tell he was listening to a ton of Police because yeah. that's that's such a Police ripoff. By the way, I love the Police too. Yeah, me too. Um, no, Michael has to do his. I I will do. Let's do one more round because dude, it's it's like I got to get out of okay, here. So it's... so I I I will do Molly Hatchet. Wow. Oh. Um. I'm going to start with Double Trouble Live. I, I love that live album by Molly Hatchet. Then, sounds great. It sounds great. It does. Mm-hmm. That the, the opening of that album always gets me, just the majesticness of that album starting. Um, then I'm going to go back to the debut album, Molly Hatchet, 1978, and right into Flirting with Disaster, 1979. Well, I those, those are three just solid albums that I can listen to start to finish no problem um, right, it's tommy's turn okay i'll finish with garbage did you say that uh beautiful garbage would be number one <laughs> bleed like me and 2.0 those are the three i would choose brian p 
peace cells, rust and peace. But you got to do the band. Uh, Megadeth. Okay. <laughs> um, peace cells, rust and peace. Well, you know what? I don't know. Rust. Everybody loves rust and peace, but uh, and I do too. But really, those first four, I could be any. I go with the pick. debut over that. What's that? I'd go with the debut over Rust in Peace. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like Rattlehead, I'd, Rattlehead, I'd love yeah, that stuff. And and Gar Samuelson, I used to I used to go over his house when he left Megadeth. He lived by me in Florida. Really? And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> it was, it was the best drummer I ever been in a room with. The guy was like a praying mantis. He was amazing. But um, let's just say Peace sells. And then the third one was good too. So far, so good. So what? Uh, I, yeah. But the last one. Dystopia was the best I think since Rust and Peace. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a new one in there just because usually you don't see a band 30 years later come out with one that strong. Uh, so Rust and Peace, Dystopia, and Peace Cells. All right, I'm gonna do what I did with ACDC. I'm gonna do with Black Sabbath. Best Ozzy, best non Ozzy. So you know, best Ozzy. I'm gonna go with Sabotage, which is <laughs> is my favorite Black Sabbath album of all time. Sabotage is. That's, is that, that Ian Gillen? The shit. What's that? Is that Ian Gillen? No, no. Sabotage, nineteen seventy-five. That's oh, got okay. a hole in the sky. I don't, I don't, on it. I don't know Black Sabbath. Earth, so. Um, then I would go with Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and then I'd go with probably Paranoid. That's the Aussie years, the non-Aussie years. Obviously, Heaven and Hell and uh, and and Mob Rules, and then I'm going to throw in the Ian Gillen record, the Born Again. So those those three are my are my favorite of the non Aussie years. I'm going to throw a, a curveball band in, sort of what Tommy did with Garbage. I'm going to th- do Angels and Airwaves. Um, wow. they've only had five albums. Yeah, but that's that's qualifies. That qualifies. And um, first one is 2007's I Empire, followed by their debut album, We Don't Need to Whisper, and then 2011's Love, Part 1 and 2. Those albums are perfect albums for headphones, lights out, start to finish, and they're even better when you're, I don't know why this is when you're flying. The, it's like my go-to, just chill. It you know it's just great music to fly by. Oh, mm. interesting. Interesting. Well, let's do one more so Brian gets another one. Okay. Let's do one more. Tommy, go ahead. I mean, yeah. All right, Brian, if you get ready. Right. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, so I'm gonna do the Beatles. Oh. Ooh. The Sgt. Peppers, and the, especially the new remaster, that is a headphone record from beginning to end. Um, Revolver oh. and the White Album. You know, Those I didn't put three. the Beatles in my list, yeah, but I have. A, I didn't even think of that. But, yeah. No, but I want to try to stay in the frame. <laughs> no, I want to try to stay in the frame because we got to <laughs> condense us. Yeah. That was excellent, Tommy. I didn't even think about the Beatles. Got to think about the Beatles. All right, Brian, you. All right, I'll man. Um, I don't like the Slayer band. Yeah, but I, I, I um, she yes, she said do Slayer. <laughs> uh, Let's do whatever you want. There's no rules, just three. Well, what are, okay, three Zeppelin albums would be Houses of the Holy. What is the one with Achilles' Last Stand? Is that Presence? That's Presence. Yeah, that. And just those are so, there's stuff on there that just you don't hear every single time you turn on the radio. You know, you hear a whole lot of love, rock and roll, Black Dog, yep. and and I'm you know I'm gonna be 49 and just listening to those for the last you know my brothers and sisters were listening to them. So hearing them for the last 40 plus years, I just got nobody's fault, stuff. but mine off that is just the shit, man. Yeah, killer stuff. Um, and then uh, I guess the third one would have to be. Um, uh, and even though it's a little played, is Zeppelin too? Just because that's one of the first records I it was actually a, an A track my brother had that I used to listen to over and over again when I was in second grade. So, so Zeppelin two, Presence, and the Houses of the Holy. Oh, and you know, Physical Graffiti. I forgot Physical Graffiti. Oh, so, I was gonna say, 
three of them, Brian. That's, you can't that's go actually four. He can do whatever he wants. Brian, I got to ask you a geeky thing because you you are a big Zeppelin aficionado just like I am. I sometimes think I'm the only person, and I'm not saying this would be one of my top three, I fucking love Coda. Coda. I, I listen to that all the time. That record, and everyone disses on it, Fuck! Are you kidding? That album is fucking awesome. Check that out. So, like, we're gonna, we, what is it? We're gonna, we're gonna groove. Is that a da 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 da? I mean, I mean, some of that stuff was meant to be on the first two records. I don't know how, like, wearing and tearing, and and uh, uh, the the version of I, I can't quit you. That's on there. It's live at a rehearsal. Holy shit! Is that fucking album incredible? I love it. Yeah, um, I, a buddy but, of mine who. Uh, I lived in Flip in Florida. He lives he's back in New York now. We played softball together. And he used to tell me about how he used to follow Zeppelin around a tri state area in the early seventies with his buddy Joe. He would go to him and his just Joe is like his best buddy. And they would go see him at Madison Square Garden, the NASA Coliseum, then he'd go down to see him in Pennsylvania. And uh he was at the Song Remains the same show and but uh, funny thing is, his buddy Joe was Joe Satriani. <laughs> they, yeah. were, oh. they were wow. like Wow growing up and dang, kind of like, wow. like best buds growing up in junior high school they were playing bands in junior high and high school and he always tell me about his buddy joe and then it turns out his buddy joe was joe satchiani pretty cool pretty best cool. bud to see zeppelin with at madison square garden <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right i'm dedicating i'm dedicating this next one to tommy um my three go-to jethro tull albums i'm going with the minstrel in the gallery or galley uh, or gallery, excuse me. Um, I'm going with Aqualung, and I'm going with Thick as a Brick. Now, <laughs> yeah. now, now, I will, I will tell people who've never listened to that mid, that early period. Tall, you think Rush is complicated? Go listen to that stuff. There's some. T- you need an abacus to keep up with some of those time changes. That stuff is so fucking awesome. I absolutely love Toll, but I, that Toll period from like 70 to 70, right right up to Songs from the Wood, which is still good, but from like Benefit, here's the easiest way. Go on Wikipedia, everything from Benefit to Songs from the Wood, that whole period is fucking incredible. Hey guys, I got a great idea. Let's, let's make a record that's just one fucking song, man. It's like 40 minutes long and everyone's going to love it. Uh, Thick as a Brick is so fucking awesome, it's not even... How can you not... As a music fan, diddle, diddle, that album diddle. is so... <laughs> I, I never really got it went through a Jethro Tull face. Um, I would... It was interesting, Tony Iommi played guitar with them briefly. He left Sabbath oh, and came back. Go back and listen to Benefit. Go back and listen to that stuff. Very yeah. Zeppelin-esque at times. There's no Benefit. It's not Zeppelin. To very Sabbath-esque at times okay. with those riffs. I'm telling you, if, if you've never checked it out, huh. check it out. And Mark doesn't right. like Poison, but he loves Jethro <laughs> Tull. <laughs> Fucking, no, I don't like Jethro Tull. I love Jethro Tull. And if you're, if you're a music fan... Again, from like 1970 through 77, that's some incredible stuff. Just incredible. Huh, interesting. The guitar playing is, is insane good. Yeah. I have, to, I have to go back and listen to that. Yeah, you sound so enthused yeah. there, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should just rush right out and listen to those records. <laughs> Brian, I'm going to put it up here like Aqualung. woo woo I'll put it on the list. Um, all right, I'm going to pick an uh, uh, an artist that I actually think um, Lisa would love. Okay. Lillian Axe. Woo! Yeah, she does. Seen him a bunch. Right? Oh, I um, love Lillian Axe. I'm going to start with Love and War. Brilliant okay. album. Absolutely brilliant. Then I'm going to go to their debut album, Lillian Self-titled. Axe. Self-titled. Self-titled debut. Produced by... Bob Kulik? <laughs> Didn't win a Grammy. Didn't win a Grammy, so no. Sorry, I was confused. Robin Crosby of Rat. Who did? Robin Crosby of Rat. Really? Produced the debut album. That? That's the only reason I discovered and heard of him, because I remember reading, oh, huh. Robin Crosby's producing this band called Lillian X. I'm like, okay, I'll buy it. Okay, what's your third? Uh, Poetic Justice. 
Oh, nice. All right. Now, I put them with... That's awesome. I don't know them as well as the other bands I'm going to mention, but but there's a couple bands that just fell between the cracks, like, and it's like their timeline. And I would kind of put them as the fourth between with King's X, Extreme, Saigon Kick, who I liked a lot, and Lillian Axe. They were just bands that were... They weren't hair bands. They had a little more to offer, but they kind of either got lumped in with hair bands or... Yep. My buddy, so my, my buddy made me a best of. What's that? Buddy made me a best of Saigon Kick, and I'm like, wow, this is really good because I didn't know any of their stuff. Hey, yeah, Brian, while well, I got you, one of my biggest guitar heroes. I have, are you into uh, Blue Oyster Cult at all? Do you ever get into uh, Buck Dharma? Yeah, they're playing uh, here next month. I because I, yeah. I tell you what, the Cultosaurus Erectus album, the uh, On Your Feet or On Your Knees live record. Uh, the, again, they're another band from much like we're talking about, you know, Rush from like 1982 or so back. Those records are just fucking, you know, insane with the guitar playing. I mean, he's just on a whole nother level. He's uh, Buck Dharma is just incredible. I, 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 I would I would add a comment about Lillian Axe that the Lillian Axe, because they're still around. Mm hmm. All the new, all the recent stuff, crap. Absolute crap. It's, well, a, totally what, different, the, um, it's a totally it, different band, basically. A different yeah. style, sound, sure. direction. Yeah, the singer's Everything's different, different right? The oh, yeah. Singer's Everybody's different. different except um, the lead guitarist. Yes, yeah. yes. And, yeah. and so, like, these earlier albums were more, had more melodic feel to them. Well, I think, <laughs> after, like, remember Psycho Schizophrenia? Yeah. That's kind of where it... They started to go a little... Dark yeah, and yes. heavy and losing the losing the 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 melody, losing you know what I liked about them. And now it's just now they're one of those bands where I'm like, oh, okay, they're doing a new album. Oh, God, I hope they go back to what they used to sound like. No, nope, you know, I'm done. Album, I'll go put on Love and War or the self titled album because I'm like, oh, Love and War kind of is like perfect. They they kind of like resurface again, but then I go back and listen to the old stuff. That was that's awesome. Yeah, those are some that's good choices. Very good choices. Hmm. All right, that was Tommy, fun. Are you, as we start with Tommy. Do we end with? Oh, we end with you. We, we end with me. So that was fun. We did we did a yes, lot there. For, oh, special guest. Yeah, thank you Special very much. guest, the weather boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And now we're going to get ripped shaped next like week. a weather balloon. <laughs> uh, we're going to get ripped next week because we don't talk about kiss enough. I thought uh, that was a fun it. show. No, yeah. so it was a good topic. Okay, hey, thanks for including me. I appreciate it. Perhaps anytime. Why is a little bit mean, more musically um... smart? <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. Look at that look stare she's giving. Wow. Right yeah. Get the hell out. Go. Get up. Go get Give me a beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after that, yeah. And I don't, had that hey, and Brian, like, don't flush the toilet. Yeah. Oh, every yes. time we get oh, so the <laughs> it's, it's, it's her. Who, me? I'm down here. All right. All right. So there you go. So I, I think your homework is pretty obvious this week. Just play along with us. Yeah. Your three definitely do your three go to Kiss albums, and then you it's can do you can pick any of the artists we picked, or you can pick any other artist. Yeah. What are you know your what? go to albums? You pick an artist, and I like. Mike, uh, Michael, I completely forgot about Lillian Axe, and they're one of my favorites. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This, this is a good way to take the three sides challenge. Yeah. Listen to something else. What are your go-tos? Yeah, and <clears throat> that is one of the things that will help other people check out new music. So that's part of the reason sure. we do this, because we want you to find other songs and other artists to support and and hopefully actually go see live if it's newer bands. Because this might come as something that's hard to believe for a few of you, but there's more to the world than just Kiss. You can listen to other music. Intelligent listeners in the Kiss Army, they know that. That's crazy talk. Each band that we talked about is a band that a Kiss fan loves. Yeah. yeah. Each one of us. That should be the only endorsement you need. A Kiss fan yeah. loves it. Go check it out. It might yeah. not work. Fine. It doesn't. But at least we're telling you these are bands and albums that we as Kiss fans love. And a few of Ryan's too. 
<laughs> all right, can we say good night? All, all, all right, so you know where to go. Leave your homework. Facebook.com, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. We're everywhere. Go leave your comments. Of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that little red subscribe button in the corner and head over to iTunes and leave us a review and a rating. It would be greatly appreciated. And uh, I think that's it. Until next week. We're out of here. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to iTunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.